Now, uh, we would like to continue with the next panel uh, with the very important topic of aviation uh, and its future in the next 20 years. So I'd like to invite uh, the moderator, Eric Dressa, uh, Secretary Den General at ECTAA, to the stage, along with uh, Mr. Jose Ramon Bauza Diaz, uh, who is a member of the Parliament, European Parliament, and Renew Europe Coordinator for the Transport and Tourism Committee. Uh, these two gentlemen will be on stage, and we also warmly welcome to the panel via video link Conrad Clifford. Uh, he is the Senior Vice President and Deputy Director General of IATA. Thank you very much, gentlemen. Thank you very much, Sorcha. Um, I don't know if we have Clifford, uh, Mr. Clifford, Conrad Clifford on line. Hi, good morning, yeah, Mr. Hello. Clifford. Good morning. So, good morning, um, good morning Eric. okay, just uh, as an introduction, um, first of all, thank you to uh, Mr. Ertuk uh, and the World, uh, the World Tourism Forum Institute for organizing this event. Um, we have the second part on the future of aviation, and we had already a very interesting and useful uh, introduction by Mr. Albaque. Um, for this uh, second part, I'm pleased to introduce so, uh, Mr. Bausa Dias from the European Parliament and Mr. Uh, Clifford, Conrad Clifford from IATA. A few words on the speakers first, so you have a better idea um, that uh, we will have interesting uh, exchanges here. Mr. Conrad Clifford is uh, today the Vice President and Deputy Director General of IATA. Um, he has um, held a number of um, positions in the airlines before, so he has an extended knowledge of this industry, and um, joined rec recently, or not recently, joined IATA from a couple of years ago, and, and recently um, the office in Geneva. Um, in this room, Mr. Bausatias is a member of the European Parliament, coordinator of the Liberal Group in the TRAN Committee for Transport and Tourism, and previously, he held different political positions. Um, he has been president of the Baric Islands government, as well as the, um, a member of the uh, Senate in Spain, amongst others. I'll, I'll stop here. <laughs> so um, I think with no further ado, as it was said, um, let's start with the, the core elements of our discussion. And I would ask, I will ask a question to the panelists. Um, I will start first with uh, Conrad uh, on the, from Geneva. So, Conrad, the uh, airline industry has been severely hit um, by the pandemic, it has been said. Um, there has a number of challenges, and uh, we just finished to discuss on sustainability, and sustainability is certainly not the least, and, uh, the least important, least urgent. So today, um, according to you, what solutions uh, are airlines and IATA putting forward to try to tackle um, this issue and, and put sustainability at the forefront of this industry? Thanks very much, Eric, and it's a real pleasure to be able to be with you this morning, um, albeit by Zoom. Um, the, uh, we had the historic annual general meeting in Boston uh, on the 4th of October, where the uh, airline members uh, passed a resolution to commit to net zero carbon by 2050. And this would bring the airline industry into line with the objectives of the Paris Agreement. Um, it was historic because, of course, it's an extraordinarily ambitious goal. Uh, but we've developed a series of five-year milestones uh, on a path towards achievement of this. And uh, really, the, the central theme in this is the availability of sustainable aviation fuel, or SAF, because in 2050, we expect to mitigate 65% of our emissions through the use of SAF, 13% through uh, new forms of propulsion, such as hydrogen, 11% um, through carbon capture, 8% through offset, and 3% through uh, efficiencies. So really, um, sustainable aviation fuel is going to be the priority for our industry over the coming 20 years. And uh, it's an enormous task because uh, we need to make it available uh, in a widespread way, and we need to make it available in a way that's affordable as well. 
And of course, um, we've just come out of, uh, or we're coming out of uh, historically the most difficult period ever for airlines in our history. We've lost over $200 billion so far as a result of COVID as an industry. We're still very much reliant on government support and government incentives. We're seeing um, a good comeback in domestic markets, but long haul is still very much uh, down at 22% of where it was prior to um, COVID. So um, it, this is a big move for airlines. It's a big commitment to make. Um, we've been very encouraged to see um, the commission proposal on SAF in the Fit for 55 program. And we've got some comments on that. We think uh, three comments, really. We think that uh, the obligation to supply SAF in every airport should be removed because we think that it makes more sense uh, to allow uh, SAF production to be closer to, to airports and therefore um, requiring every single airport to uh, supply SAF is probably not logistically or financially viable. We think that airlines should be allowed to book and claim uh, the SAF quantities that they use. This increases flexibility of supply and reduces the costs. And we think that airlines should be allowed to get SAF production directly from producers and not just from suppliers. And this would be the same uh, as currently applies to the kerosene, kerosene market. Um, but overall, um, we're, 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 we're pushing very, very hard for SAF. It really is uh, the solution for our industry. We need um, everybody in our industry, all the stakeholders to, to, to shoulder their fair share of the burden. So that means not just the airlines, but it means uh, fuel suppliers, uh, technology providers, uh, airports, a ANSPs. Uh, so that we can make this uh, target uh, of net zero carbon by, by 2050. Thank you, Conrad. I think before we, we jump back to this, uh, to the different aspect you mentioned in, in sustainable fuel or in sustainability uh, in, in general uh, from the airlines, um, we shouldn't forget that sustainability are three pillars. There is the environmental pillar, the social pillar and the economical pillar. So I turn to uh, Mr. Barsadias talking about economical pillar of sustainability. What aviation is important for tourism? Is it still true today? Absolutely, absolutely. Thank you very much, first of all, for this invitation to your Global Tourism Forum. It's absolutely important and absolutely linked. We, you, we cannot think about tourism without thinking about the sector, about the aviation sector. Mr. Abakar said that the, uh, in one of the previous speech that we can think about doing anything without the aviation. Look about what do we have to do without aviation in the tourism sector. Almost it depends on everything. I must say, you have presented me as the former president of Balearic Island. Can you imagine what would you do in the Balearic Islands without aviation? It's absolutely unbelievable and any other islands. But we as well, we are small islands. Each country is on a small island in the border of the, for example, Europe. But we need the aviation sector to arrive. 80% of the tourists who are coming to Spain, for example, 80%, they are flying by the aviation sector, obviously. But this is absolutely linked in order that we have to think, indeed, about the future. Because what do we say that? We are talking about the aviation sector, the sustainable fuels, what I have to do in the future. But let's think that only 2-3% of the whole emissions worldwide is by the sector, just 2-3%. If we had to do this committing with the environment that we are involved in, let's think in how to do it, but seriously, without populism, just thinking what we have in fact to do, what can the sector put on the table. Are the technology available to do that? Do we have several of the engineers that we had to do that? But after we count the politics and just say, let's do that. We have to arrive to zero emissions, neutral emissions in 2030, 2035, 2040. I don't know the year, but it is real uh, that 
Can we afford that? Because if we want to arrive, but we don't have the technology, we, have, we don't have the engines, it will be populism, and we are not on the right side. Then, tourism sector is absolutely linked to the, to the aviation sector. In fact, we have seen what happened with this pandemic situation. No flight, zero tourism. And in fact, we have gone forward because of the sector has been involved in. In the DNA of the sector is the research, the innovation, the investment. Everything is in the DNA. And all the sector of the four that the sector has took, it's just because it is possible, because it is realistic, not because somebody wants to say something, yes, I put my finger on the, on the air and let's see how is it blowing out. No, let's be serious then. Tourism is absolutely linked to the sector. We have to be working together step by step, but by the hand, not one after the other before. No, because if, if we do that, we don't have the real and necessary rhythm to arrive, and the sector needs to be connected. When we talk about the connections, maybe we talk or we can think about the continental connections, the region, uh, the, the national connections, but let's think about the regional connections. Let's think about how people, tourism is important, but without the aviation sector, we cannot fly it, in fact, for having all services, for going to a doctor, to the medical clinic, to another place that we need, to the businesses. Obviously, the tourism yeah. is the, 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 the best uh, way to, to move, but it's absolutely linked tourism to the aviation sector. Um, representing um, the travel agent and uh, tour operators here, I can only uh, subscribe to your position. Uh, certainly, we have to work all together when you mention that it's the whole chain. Um, by come back to you on, on also another aspect, because uh, we mentioned that the Fit for 55 measures uh, from uh, the European Union. So we know that climate change is a mitigating climate change is an important issue uh, for the European Union. There will Green Deal is the let's say one of the most key of the keywords today. If you want to enter any room in Brussels, um, what will be according to you the impact uh, for the industry of this? Um, as, as a coordinator of the Liberal Group, what will be the impact of these measures for for the industry? Let's see. We are hearing package fit for 55. We will hear it for the next two years and a half. From the beginning of the period, we have been hearing Green Deal. Everything is linked to Green Deal. You go to a restaurant, Green Deal. You go to somewhere, Green Deal. What's your name? Balfa Dias, Green Deal. Everything is Green Deal, wherever you go. But let's be serious. What does the Fit for 55 uh, package mean? There are 11, 11 uh, parliamentarian resolutions. But some of them, three mainly, three of these, any other, are absolutely important and decisive for the future of the sector. Because we are always absolutely committed with the environment and trying to, to have and to get the most sustainable environment. But I, I told you before, let's be serious. The European Commission is absolutely tackled with this uh, green Deal and the sustainable uh, situation, but there are two important points. ETS and sustainable aviation fuels. If this has to represent or decrease in the competitiveness, let's be careful. Let's, let's see what are we doing in the future, but yet, because if we start to put taxes, 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 or more taxes, as soon as you put taxes up, the ticket up, and the tourists down. It's absolutely linked. And if you want to arrive to this neutral situation that we want to, we have to take serious decisions, not only populistic. ETS immediately will suppose 
increase of the price of the movement, increase of the price of the tickets, decrease of the movement of the people in fact with the crisis. And if we can do that without putting taxes every day on the table, let's spend more time to arrive to that. But if we do that, many companies out of Europe will be waiting for us because all of our competitiveness will fall down. And this is absolutely serious. And we had to arrive, of course, no, more, no one more than me is committed with that. But let's do it together, step by step, by the hands of the technology, by the hand of the, of the producer of the aircraft, by the hand of all together. If I start running as a politician just to that door, but I arrive the first, and I arrive alone, the companies, the tickets, the customers, the tourists will be on my back. And so far distance, I will be alone, and the, tourists, the tourism will be break down. Thank you. I think the message is, is very clear, uh, indeed. I hope um, so. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, Conrad, um, you mentioned, and it is also connected with uh, what Jose Ramon just said about uh, restarting. Uh, there's a number of our parameters to help airlines to restart and be profitable, or at least to fly. So price of a ticket, of course, to attract consumers, customers is, is essential. But uh, we know that um, um, health measures that has been set up, and in particular COVID certificates, are also important. Uh, we have in yeah. Europe made uh, some efforts. Do you think there is something that could help airlines on the long term, and not only in tomorrow, um, um, by having um, international standards or interoperability yeah. of these certificates? Yeah, yeah, I do. And I just wanted to um, reinforce what Mr. Bowser was saying, the importance of connectivity. And you heard it earlier from His Excellency Akbar al Bakr that people want to travel. There is huge demand in the market for people to travel, but they're being held back at the moment by all of the differing regulations and restrictions um, that, of course, have been put in place for, for health reasons in respect of, of COVID. But as we move from, from pandemic to endemic, we have to find a way to manage these health restrictions more effectively. And um, in IATA, we believe the answer is digitization. Um, at the moment, we see a lot of countries with uh, paper processing. And uh, even in the EU, that caused enormous problems earlier in the year with effectively queuing times at airports around the region doubling. Um, and that was with only 30% of the normal uh, passenger loads. If we get back to sort of 70% of normal passenger loads, we can be looking at, at, at queuing times four times as long as they were before because of all this paper processing. So the key is digitization. And the EU um, introduced the digital COVID certificate, which actually um, we're, we're promoting globally as a best practice. Uh, we think more governments should take this up and we'd like to see as few uh, differing standards around the world as possible because uh, the more differing standards you have, the more differences you have, the more confusing it is for, for travelers when they travel and actually stressful as well, because you're, you're never quite sure whether you're good to go or not. But um, a digital system um, can enable you to do that and to travel safely, securely and stress-free. And, and also um, in a way that doesn't block up um, airports, um, again, causing stress and inconvenience. So uh, we're, we're, we're a, a big fan of minimizing the numbers of these standards. If, um, if more countries could adopt the DCC standard, that would be very good because the verification um, uh, programs within DCC are also very useful and particularly for countries in parts of the world that aren't particularly advanced in terms of, of IT. So, so the, this is actually a, a very good thing. One thing that's quite worrying at the moment within Europe is that we still see a lot of, of different country standards, rules, restrictions in respect of COVID. And we really have to get to one single standard for the EU uh, that all governments buy into and that all passengers can then understand. It'll be safer, uh, less stressful and more efficient. 
Thank you, Conrad. Um, if um, the uh, organizer can allow that, I have uh, received a, a request for a question in, from the meeting room. So, um, Mr. Connelly, ambassador uh, from um, the uh, Republic of Trinidad and Tobago, would like to raise a question uh, for uh, Conrad uh, Clifford first. Thank you very much. I hope I'm being heard. And thank you Go very ahead. much to the moderator and to the organizers for allowing a question from the floor. I don't know if I'm breaking protocol, but thank you so very much yeah. for facilitation. <laughs> <laughs> um, my question is a very simple one. Um, if I were a recent graduate from a university interested in a career in the aviation industry, perhaps interested in becoming a pilot, we've heard much about over the next 10 years there will be serious challenges. Do I have a future in that industry? Do I have a future as a pilot? Because we're talking about sustainability here. We have to have sustainable jobs. The jobs are the future for our young people. So perhaps it's a question to um, either of the panelists or perhaps Mr. Albaca, who is who's returned, maybe they can shed some light on that question. And thank you so very much for giving me the opportunity. It's been a wonderful event so far. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Conrad, as a representative of IATA first, uh, I think um, this unexpected question is for you. Um, <laughs> it's a very good question. And thank you very much to, to, to the ambassador. Um, yeah, there's a, look, we, we, we're going through um, very difficult times right now. But time and again, the aviation industry and the tourism industries have demonstrated their extraordinary resilience in coming back from the global financial crisis, 9-11, uh, many other um, natural and, and, uh, and different events uh, that have affected our industry, we've always bounced back. We've always come back stronger. And in fact, we'll come out of this uh, pandemic, now becoming an endemic, we'll be stronger than ever. So um, to answer your young graduate, yes, there is, a, there is a future and there's a good future in aviation and in travel and tourism. Because like I said at the beginning, people want to travel all of the statistics support that, and this industry uh, will come back uh, in, in, in quick time. Because um, reacting um, unexpectedly to uh, challenges is the demonstration of the uh, capacity of the industry to plan the future. So, Mr. Albaque, if you are able to give a reply also to Mr. Connelly, um, it was not planned, but uh, thank you for taking the floor. I agree with my colleague from IATA there will always be requirement for pilots in our industry. The industry will grow again. It may not grow at the speed it was growing until 20, 2019 because everybody, you know, thought it was fashionable to launch an airline. And I always, whenever anybody asks me about uh, being, uh, getting involved with them as a partner to launch an airline, and um, I know they have plenty of money, I always told them that if you are a billionaire, and if you want to become a millionaire, you launch an airline. But going back to, uh, to the young uh, student's uh, 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 question, I think, yes, he will have the opportunity uh, to be a pilot. It only depends of how well he will go through the laborious process of being interviewed to become a pilot. <laughs> Thank you. I think this is, this is a message also to show to the outside world, this industry has a future for sure. And uh, as you mentioned, there is no other options than uh, continuing improving airlines and aviation um, in order to be able to keep the world um, at the pace uh, of its development and, and growth. Like I and said, uh, air travel will be uh, uh, instrumental uh, in our lives for the, for the foreseeable future. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Albaca. Um, Mr. Jose Ramon, because I'm switching from first name yes. to uh, no surname. So uh, we were just mentioning um, DCC uh, as a key element um, in the, um, let's say, in the future for the airlines and how we can improve uh, connectivity in the future or restart traveling. What is also important is all the effort that has been made by the destination uh, in order to be able to have airlines coming back in, in their place. I remember you made videos 
during the first or second lockdowns in the Barrick Islands, where the, the, the island was, was empty, I would say, like all the streets in, in Europe. So could you, in, in few words, could you explain how important and what uh, were the efforts from the um, Balearic uh, government as an example in order to attract um, airlines again and tourists again in, in the destination? Yes, I always say, used to say that tourism is not just a world, it's an experience. Because there are many, many things involved in that. You can have the best air company in the world, you can have the best restaurant, you can have the best hotel, but with, you are getting out of the airport and a drop fall down on your suite your experience is the worst. Because tourism is everything. It starts when you are coming into an aircraft and it finishes when you arrive at home. That's the, the, the way you had to, we had to do it together. In the Balearic Islands, for example, you said, I accept, I record some videos in order to tell people what the, the tourism situation was in fact. Because we're always talking about fewers, about averages, but million people involved in that. People who has closed the restaurant, people who has, has to close the businesses, rent a car closed. There are some, just this example, rent a car, that is, they closed the door in October 19 and they opened it again in May 2021. One year and a half, more than that. Can't you imagine how can not only a company, but a familiar business can afford that. That's the way we had to put f faces and names after or over the figures. And I would have to be absolutely involved on that. What about tourismophobia? It's crazy. Absolutely. This is the real populistic. They are taking in account or they are getting the worst situation of a crisis to beat again the sector that has been more heated ever in the history with tourism and uh, transport, in this case, aviation sector. That's the way I, I just wanted to people to know what is tourism. It's not just put some money on the table. There are thousands, millions of people who are living at that. 20% of the employees in Europe are linked to tourism. Thanks to tourism, the last crisis that we lived before this one in the pandemic in the 80s, mm -hmm. in the 2008, thanks to that, different countries, Spain once was there, Italy, France, Greece, we had the opportunity to get out as soon as we could. Then, please, don't hit the sector who is helping us to improve the society, to have more employment, to develop the, the tourism and, the, in this case, the aviation sector, has invest, has the, in their DNA, the technology, the efficiency, the competitiveness. All of this, tourism and transport, if they are not going together hand by hand, we don't get the future that we want. And that's the way I want to, to, to record that videos to say people what is in real the tourism and the sector in this industry, air, aircraft and aviation sector is. Thank you. Um, we arrive at the end of this panel, and I think um, if I can sum up in, in, in a word, uh, in a word this, what has been said, responsibility. I think we all see that um, there's a sense of responsibility in this industry, anticipating um, the changes, trying to improve uh, the process. Also, responsibility in working together with all the stakeholders, from um, from the travel agent and tour operators, if I may say, from my own chapel and to the destination um, via uh, the airlines, um, in order to have a sustainable uh, development and sustainable environmentally, economically, and socially uh, sense of step. Thank you very much for your presentation. Thank you, Conrad, from um, Geneva. Thank you, Mr. Socha, the floor is yours. Um, no, I don't, do uh, we have any, I don't think we have time for many more questions. Uh, we're running uh, just two minutes. Uh, we have, if anybody does have one last question. Okay. No? 
In that case, uh, we will uh, segue very nicely. Thank you very much to our esteemed guests uh, for their uh, insights. Um, to be honest with you, I would like to say from my point of view that as a sector that touches so many others and uh, the experience of tourism uh, really being something that um, requires constancy, as you were so very well pointing out. Uh, the same goes for branding, uh, destination branding. Uh, indeed, without constancy, um, and we're not just talking about companies here, but we're also talking about destinations and countries. Uh, without constancy, um, our audience and our visitors uh, become very confused. So I do think that this is something that we will need to pay, pay a very close eye and pay very close attention to in the future. So thank you very much for your insights. Thank you. Thank you.